For about three weeks, I've been building the Ultimate Webflow Nav component. It has everything we need for most projects, but it's easy to disable individual elements while allowing the client to add these features later on when needed. It switches to the mobile nav based on the user's font size, so we never have to worry about running out of space for our links. Each dropdown waits to open till the previous dropdown is finished closing, and if there's no other open dropdown, it'll just open instantly. Each dropdown has a max height so that on shorter screen heights, we can scroll inside to read the rest of the content. And that max height is dynamic, so when this top bar is closed, that max height will be larger now because we have more space. And when we refresh our page or switch between pages, it will remember that that top bar is closed, so that it doesn't keep reappearing. And whenever the menu is open, it disables the rest of the page from scrolling, so we don't have scrolling inside of scrolling. And the same thing happens for our mobile nav. When that's open, it disables the rest of the page from scrolling. It's easy to customize if we want all our nav links aligned towards the left with the logo, more traditionally towards the right with the actions, or in the middle like so. And it's easy for keyboard users and screen readers to navigate. The first time we tab on, there's a hidden skip to main content. That way they don't have to tab past all the nav links if they don't want to. We have all the RIA attributes needed on different elements like so. And we have little quality of life upgrades for the user, like indicating if this is an external or internal link based on whether or not it opens in a new tab. I'll leave a link to these components in the description below. For now, I'll copy this nav1 component, the Webflow version, and I'll go ahead and paste it into my project. So inside this nav bar, there's an embed, and right up at the top is some different styles we can customize. So we have the nav height, we can change that to five rim. We have the banner height, we could change that to 2.8 rim, and that'll increase the height of this. And we can move these to the native variable panel if we want, but it's important to have these styles saved in variables so that the max height on our dropdowns and on our menu can be based on the height of these different elements here. And we can also animate these variables either with GSAP or Webflow interactions. Maybe when we scroll away from the hero, we want the nav to shrink in height. We could animate that variable and it would automatically update the max height on our dropdowns and everything based on these different variables. We have one for icon thickness and I can go ahead and change that to maybe 0.3 rim. And we'll notice that increases the thickness on all icons in the nav. And we can easily adjust that like so. There's also drop down open and close duration. So this is our close, this is our open. If we want the drop down to close slower, we would just update this variable here. And we'd also want to make sure on each of our drop down components to update the close delay. So that way it doesn't actually hide the drop down menu till the animation's finished. So we'd just update that close delay across each of our different drop down components, like so if we decide to make that change. There's a backdrop that appears whenever our dropdowns open to darken the rest of the page, and a separate menu backdrop that appears whenever the menus open like so. So we could delete either of those backdrops if we don't want them, and we can style them independently. So on this dropdown backdrop, let's add a backdrop filter of blur so it blurs everything behind it. Its opacity will animate from zero to 100%, but we can style its background color here, which is using our swatch dark at a 20% opacity. We could switch that over to 40% if we want to darken it even more. And now we'll notice it blurs and darkens everything behind this dropdown. Inside our nav component, we have a desktop nav and we also have a mobile nav. By default, the mobile nav is set to block and the desktop nav is set to display none. But on larger screen sizes, our code shows the desktop nav and hides the mobile nav. We can control the point that we switch between those two navs inside of our embed. So up here at the top, we have these three numbers here of 60M. If we change them all to say 80M instead, it would change the point that we switch between those two. Now, any style changes we make need to be applied on the desktop breakpoint. So I'll increase this till I see my mobile nav here because that mobile nav can be shown on any breakpoint. I'll go ahead and open it up. And let's say we want to change its background color. We're gonna be sure to apply this change here on the desktop breakpoint. So that way that change applies across all screen sizes. So what if we want to add a new link to this menu or maybe change one of its URLs? We don't have to manually update those links across both the desktop and mobile nav. To be able to do that, to keep them in sync, we'll be sure to turn this into a component. So I have a div here called nav links component that holds all of the different links. And we'll go ahead and create a component here and I'll just call this nav links. 
The mobile style will be the default style here and we'll use the same component inside both the desktop and mobile menu so that any structural changes we make apply across both instances. But we'll want a variant for our desktop styles. And this will be easier to do once we have true component variants in Webflow. But for now, we'll go ahead and just add a combo class of is desktop to this element and make any style changes we want. Here I'm changing the flex direction. And I'm going to be sure to add that is desktop uh, class to every single child inside of this. And I'll use that to make any style changes. So I'll add is desktop to this link and I'll use that to change the padding, change the height and make any changes I want for desktop. So once every single child has an is desktop class and we've changed their styles to look how we want them to look on desktop, then we can just link this is desktop class to a component field. So to do that, we'd go ahead and remove is desktop from the element and under custom attributes, we'd apply a class attribute and we'd say is desktop. So this is going to add a combo class of is desktop to this specific element, but we want to be able to turn that combo class on and off. So we'll go ahead and link it to a component field called class. And that way we can remove that uh, value when we want to remove the combo class. We can add it back when we want to add the combo class. And we just do that to each child. So on this child here, we remove is desktop and I come over to the custom attributes give it an attribute of class and link it to the field we've already created. So that way, when I close out of this component, when I remove is desktop from this one field, it's going to remove that combo class from every single child inside. So we can easily switch between our mobile and desktop variant of this component. And then all we need to do is copy this component and we can head back over to desktop and we'd go ahead and delete, uh, if we check right here, our nav links component and we replace it with the actual uh, component element and switch it over to the desktop variant. So that's how we could keep those two in sync. Sometimes we'll want to disable a dropdown in the mobile menu. So the search dropdown doesn't really need to be a dropdown on the mobile menu. It can just be automatically opened with the search field for us. Now to do this, it's really simple. We just select the dropdown element and give it an attribute of data open on mobile. And when we do that, it'll automatically disable the animation on mobile. It'll hide the dropdown toggle and show the dropdown content. We could apply this to our language switcher or any other dropdown we want. We can also customize our menu animation. Right now it's animating with a clip path, almost like from height zero to height auto, like so. But we can change the open and close animations independently. So we might leave the open animation as is, but then for the close animation, fade it from opacity one to opacity zero if we want those two to work differently. We could also have it slide from the right, or if we want it to even maybe open up in a circle, we could choose this clip path here. Maybe we anchor it from this side and it goes from like this to fully revealed. So all we would need to do is just copy this clip path value and we'd go ahead and paste this in as our final state right here. And then for our starting state, we want it to start fully clipped. So we'd change this to 0% like so. And then for the open, we would just do, or for the close, we'd do the opposite. So we'd start it fully revealed and it would animate back to being fully closed like this. And then we can go ahead and test that out, but we should have this just opening from the side in more of a circle, circular fashion like so. So that's how to customize and build out this nav one component in Webflow.